Hi, welcome to this edition of Digital Discoveries. In this episode and for the next few episodes, we're going to be looking at something called the Technology Application Teaks. And since it's Teaks related, it's probably dedicated toward our teachers. So these next few episodes are for our teachers here in our district. And so what are the Technology Application Teaks? Why are they important? How should we be teaching them? Those are all questions that we'll be answering in the coming uh, episodes. Today's episode is going to be just kind of an introduction to the technology application TEKS. Where do they come from and how do they fit in and how are we supposed to use them in our curriculum? And for some teachers, this may be the first time they've actually even heard of the technology application TEKS. And the reason for that is in the past, the technology application TEKS ran kind of parallel to our core curricular teaks. And so in our core curricular teaks, you might come across some phrases or some sentences that say something like, the student will use technology or the student can use technology. Um, and so when you he see that term technology, then you were supposed to bounce back out to the technology application teaks and see how that's supposed to be used. And so, um, what we're going to do is what we're going to try to do here is we're going to try to mesh the technology application teaks and our core curricular teaks into one so everybody can understand how they work together. So where do these teaks come from? What are they? Where are they? You know, if this is the first time I ever heard from them, what, what are they? Well, the original technology application teaks were written back in 1998 and they were implemented in 1998 by the state. And Sometimes <laughs> we like to, in our department, we like to call them the secret teaks because uh, a lot of teachers really haven't even heard that there are technology application teaks out there. Um, the new teaks, after being, being in place for 14 years, they rewrote them and uh, they were written by a state uh, committee of, of educators across the state. It wasn't, just, uh, it wasn't just some people at TEA that rewrote these. It was educators, it was policy makers. Um, they came together just like they wrote, rewrite any kind of, of TEAK. They got together on committee, put these TEAKs together. They were approved at the end of 2011 by the State Board of Education. They've actually drawn from a variety of national and state standards like the um, ISTE standards, the P21 standards, and for those of you that don't know those yet, we'll talk about those in a second. And they also drew from something called the National Education Technology Plan. So, bet you didn't even know there was a National Education Technology Plan out there, but they are. And there's lots of things out there that have been used, moved together to make the TEAK. So, let's go ahead and drop in and look at some of the organizations that we got these, uh, uh, that have, uh, that we've used information from to make these TEAKs. One of the first organizations that we've used, uh, that they, the committee that wrote the new TEKS got their information from was the, the Committee for, or the Organization for 21st Century Skills. Now, some of you may have never even heard of this, but since right before the turn of the century, there was an organization created by educators, organizations, and um, um, that's uh, across state lines. It's a, it's a kind of a uh, countrywide organization that sets standards for what our students should know to function in the 21st century. What are the skills that students need to know for to become successful in the 21st century? And so they came up with a set of skills called the 21st century skills. So whenever you hear in a presentation or whenever you hear somebody talking about our students need 21st century job skills, that's where they got them from. They got them from that P21 group. Um, and so I'll give you the website and where that is in a, in a few minutes so you can actually go check them out. But you can see there that it's kind of an all-encompassing type of, of uh, thing there. It's got professional development for our people, uh, curriculum and instruction, standards and assessment, what the students are needing to do, just life and career skills, it's very, um, it's very all-encompassing. And so that was one organization that the, uh, the TEKS drew from. Another one that the uh, TEKS drew from, and this was probably the most important one, was the ISTE NETS. Now, a lot of people have never heard of the NETS, and what NETS stands for are the National Education Technology Standards. 
NET stands for National Education Technology Standards. It's from an organization called ISTE, the International Society for Technology Education. And there are NETs for almost everybody in education. There's NETs for administrators, there are NETs for teachers, and there are NETs for students. And so for our technology application TEKS, they draw heavily on the NETs for students standards that come out of ISTE. And you can see that there are six different strands in there, creativity, technology operations, digital citizenship, critical thinking, research and information, communication and collaboration. Those are the six strands that, are stu that the International Society for Technology Education NETS standards have for our students to use. And you'll see that um, our technology application TEKS draw very, very heavily from the NETS S, the NETS S standards. So, so what we did here was when they wrote them all, they looked at uh, they looked at all these different things, the core curricular TEKS, they put them into the pile, they looked at the 21st century skills, they put them into the pile, the NETS S, they put them into the pile. There's Nickleby requirements, there's that, uh, those uh, federal requirements, they put them all into the pile. Now remember, it's not just the state of Texas that's asking our students to become technology literate. Well, I threw in Nickleby there because Nickleby is the law that we still go by here. And Nickleby requires that all students are what's called technology literate by the end of eighth grade. That's a requirement of the federal law that all students are technology literate by the end of eighth grade. The federal government lets individual states say what technology literacy is. And that's where we have our TEKS. So the TEKS are what the state of Texas is saying. That is, that's what our, the state of Texas says. A student that successfully goes through all these TEKS, that's technology literacy as defined by the state of Texas. And that meets the federal Nickleby requirement. So if you jumble all those together, you put them all, you put them in a big pot and mix them, you end up with a technology application TEKS of 2012. So we're going to look a little bit at these. When we start looking at our technology application TEKS in upcoming episodes, there's some things that um, I'd like you to pay attention to, some things that you need to notice. The language of the TEKS is very, very vague. And it's done that way on purpose. The previous TEKS that were approved back in 1998, they had some very specific language in them. For instance, they would say something like, Students would have to know how to save information on a floppy disk. Well, we all know what happened to floppy disks. So after a few years, we don't even use floppy disks anymore, but that was still a requirement because the TEKS, you never know how long they're going to last. So we had those TEKS since 1998, so they lasted more than 10 years in the state of Texas. Another thing that uh, students were asked to know about were dial-up modems. Because when the TEKS were written back in 1998, those original technology application TEKS, dial-up modems were the big thing. And we didn't see things coming down the line like cable modems and, and DSL and stuff like that. So now they learned their lesson, I think. And um, they made very broad terms. Very, it's very vague in the language. The technology application TEKS are also meant to be used in every curricular area. They're not designed to be used as a standalone uh, course. There are technology application TEKS in high school, and those are designed for individual courses. But for K through 8, all of these TEKS are supposed to be intermingled into our core curricular and actually any subject area. So technology should not be separated from our regular teaching. It should be in intermingled, and we'll talk a little bit about that as well. Just a reminder that we cannot pick and choose what kind of TEKS we want to teach. All the TEKS are the law. All the TEKS are required by state law that we, we teach. And so it's a non-negotiable. Uh, every single one of these TEKS are something that we do have to do in K through 8. And when we start looking at these TEKS in more depth in a little while, you'll see that they match very, very well with the requirements of the new STAR test. So you'll see that the, uh, the TEKS, if we use them properly, are going to match very well with what our, our ex expectations of students in our core curricular areas. 
So how should we teach the, tr the TEKS, the technology application TEKS? I kind of touched on it earlier. But um, I think you should think about it like wet noodles. So think about what dry spaghetti looks like. Here's what dry spaghetti looks like. And at, in dry spaghetti, if you, look, if, if you consider each piece of spaghetti uh, a core curricular TEK or a core concept, then they never mix, they never mingle. And, and so a lot of times what we've done in the past is that we keep the core concept areas away from our technology concept areas. But really, what we should do is we should put those core concept areas and those standards and our technology standards in and boil them. And we should end up with this. We should end up with wet noodles, where everything is all mixed together. You cannot tell where one core standard ends. The technology and the core standards, they're all mixed together. You use the technology to teach the core standards. They shouldn't be separated. So you shouldn't have technology on Thursday because it's Thursday or, or the students were good so they get to go to the computer lab. That shouldn't be the way. The, the technology should be intertwined just like that spaghetti right there. They should all be like mixed up uh, to where the technology is just another tool that's used to teach in our classrooms. To emphasize this another way, we should not teach a concept on one side and then use some technology on the other. We shouldn't keep them separate. What we should do is we should put them together and teach a concept using technology as one of the tools as often as possible. So they shouldn't be separated, they should be put together. So that's the way that technology should be treated. Another, um, another way of looking at it is we don't treat pencils separately than we treat other pieces of equipment where students are creating content. We don't treat uh, crayons separately or construction paper separately. They're just tools that we use and technology should be tools that we use um, it, when we're teaching our students even in every area, even art, uh, even in PE, uh, all of our core curricular areas for sure. So let's look real quick at the six strands. In the past, the, uh, the technology application teaks had four strands. They've expanded those six strands, and you should notice that those six strands look very, very similar to the six strands that are in the SD nets for students. Creativity and innovation, communication and collaboration, research and information literacy, critical thinking, problem solving, decision making, digital citizenship, technology operations and concepts. Those are the six areas where students are um, required to use technology in. So if you think about it, if you just look at those six and you look at the top four, creativity, communication, research, critical thinking, those are all areas that are across curricular areas. We don't say creativity and innovation is just something for technology. We don't say communication and collaboration is just something we do in technology. No, creativity, communication, research, critical thinking, those are all areas that are across core curricular and across all curricular areas, or they should be across all curricular areas. Probably the things that are just specific to technology are digital citizenship and technology operations and concepts. So in upcoming episodes, we're going to be talking about each one of these and what each one of them means and how we're going to put them into our classrooms. Let's talk a little bit about how the technology application TEKS are grouped, very similar to how they were previously grouped. Kindergarten to second grade is a group of TEKS. In other words, kindergarten doesn't have its own set of TEKS. First grade doesn't have its own set of TEKS, and second grade doesn't have its own set of TEKS. Kindergarten to second grade are grouped into a, uh, uh, an area where you could teach those concepts at any time from kindergarten to second grade. Now, optimally, we'd like to see the students get the TEKS in every grade level. Third to fifth grade are another grouped area, so students can get those TEKS anywhere from third grade to fifth grade. Now, what, um, what we've kind of done in the past is we've kind of sloughed them off to, to other grade levels. We, we're a third grade teacher and say, oh, well, we can wait till fifth grade till we get to that. But what happens is everybody pushes them off to the side, pushes them off to the side, and then they never get those technology application TEKS. And so what we're going to try to do in our district is we're going to actually try to 
put uh, specific lessons where we hit those concepts, those technology application techniques, into our, our lesson plans. A big difference between previous years and this year, uh, or the previous techniques and these techniques, is that in the middle school, each grade level has its own specific set of techniques uh, for our technology application techniques. In previous years, six to eight was a grouping. But now, 6th grade, 7th grade, and 8th grade have their own specific set of TEKS. Again, they follow those six strands, but they have specific things that they're asked to do in each grade level. And I think one of the reasons that they did this is because many districts throughout the state um, kind of held off technology until the 8th grade. And so students weren't getting any kind of formal edu uh, technology education until they had like a, an 8th grade class. This way, students are required to do technology in every grade level at middle school. The language of the TEKS uh, sounds very, very much like the language of the STAR test. They stand very, very language. They use higher order thinking skills. They use those words, those buzzwords that are very, very common to the STAR test. And there's a reason for that. And the reason for that is that the the technology application TEKS are designed, if we're using them properly and we're using them like the way they should be, they're designed to help our students achieve with those higher order thinking skills that the, that the STAR test is asking for. Now, we've talked about something in the past called the SAM mar model of technology integration, where S was substitution all the way up to R, which was redefinition. These TEKS work very well with that SAMR model of technology integration. And so if you paid attention to those previous uh, digital discovery episodes, you'll feel very comfortable with these new TEKS. I'd like to leave you with this kind of, this very interesting quote. And uh, this is from the ISTE Nets for Students. Simply being able to use technology is no longer enough. Today's students need to be able to use technology to analyze, learn, and explore. Digital age skills are vital for preparing students to work, live, and contribute to the social and civic fabric of their communities. That's a very powerful statement. And this is from the student nets from ISTE. And remember that the technology application techniques are based on the student nets from, uh, from ISTE. So here's some resources that we have available. These are places where I got information from for today's show. Uh, ISTE Nets are at that website. Partnership for 21st Century Skills is uh, uh, p21.org. I've shortened the technology application TEKS line from uh, TEA. It's actually a big, long URL. That's a much shorter one. There's actually, if our teachers are up on Project Share, which you should be by now, there's actually a Project Share Epsilon uh, uh, group that's devoted, uh, dedicated completely to the tech new technology application TEKS. Then that's that TA TEKS Project Share group. And then there's another one on Project Share called the Texas um, uh, TATN, uh, which is a group that will be showing you how to integrate technology into your classrooms. And so, um, and the TATN stands for Technology Application Teachers Network. So that's an introduction to our new technology application TEKS. In our upcoming episodes, we're going to be looking at those strands, what each one of those strands mean, and we're going to be talking about how they're written for each grade level. So thank you for joining me for this episode of Digital Discoveries. We'll see you next time.